Hey guys, this one is a complete Pixar tutorial. I'm gonna go through setting up an account, all of the settings and social features of the app, then get into a basic editing tutorial for editing photos, and then going through to complete that and exporting or posting them as well. Check out the links in the description for more Pixar and also video and photo editing tutorials as well. Let's get into the app. When you first open up the PixArt app, you're gonna to have to create an account. You can do that by pressing the create an account button. That will take you through to setting up with a separate email address. So it's a normal sign up process. Or if you wanna sign up with your Facebook, Snapchat, or Apple ID, you can press those options too. So just sign up, confirm your account with the email they'll send you, and I'll see you in the PixArt app. This is what the app may look like for you. It's gonna be slightly different depending on when you use it because every day this homepage actually is just a bunch of different images and they're gonna change every day. So first thing, we're gonna go into the settings page because there's a couple of things here that you might wanna look at. Firstly, you can edit your profile. So click on edit profile. Here you can click on your username, your name, your email address and your password. So if you literally just click on it like this, you actually can change it. Just press OK and then you can change your name and your username. If you want to upload a photo, just click this option. Then choose either Facebook import if you want to use some images from your Facebook or click choose and it will go through to your camera roll. I'm just gonna choose this selfie of me to put in there. You can pinch and resize it and drag and move around. So I'm just gonna pinch the circle itself to resize. That's fine for me, so I'm gonna press apply. And then now I have my avatar there. As I come out of the settings page, this is really your social media page in Pixar because it is a social media account as well. You can connect your Facebook right here, as you can see. I'm just gonna click off of this. And then all of your followers and people that you are following will be in here for you in a kind of Instagram style feed. Other important settings though, if you come up to the top right hand corner and press the three dots, this is where you can upgrade to PixArt Gold. This just has uh, a few more features, a few more editing tools and way more templates. Let's go into settings though, and there are a few things that you might wanna look at. Firstly, you can sync contacts from your phone. You can press this one and do that if you want to. I'm happy not to sync this though, so I'm just gonna come out of here. You can also turn on iCloud sync, which may be really useful for you if you wanna save all your edits in your iCloud account. And you can turn off and on enable edit history upload. So this is all of your edits and your saved edits. Do you want that to be uploaded and saved or not? So you can turn that on and off as you wish. Let's get out into the app though. And we're gonna go over to this page, which is the challenges page. Like I said, PixArt is a social network as well. And challenges, really they are a community of people and designers and users who use the app to make certain types of designs or artworks based on the rules of the challenge. So anyone can take part, including you. And you can see different challenges here. So you have an editing challenge right here and you have an image remix challenge. So you can actually click on the image and the challenge will be described for you. So right now you can see that actually you can submit three remixes of the provided photo. So this is the photo up here and these are some of the rules of the competition. And then right down here, these are some artist submissions. So people that have changed it. And the way that you participate is just clicking this big participate button down at the bottom. What it's gonna do is take you through to the challenge page. So right now you can see a completely blank bag and you're gonna have to decorate this or just give it a design using all of the editing tools. We're gonna go through every editing tool in a second, but this is how you take part in challenges. And then when you've made your edits, you can click the next button up in the top right and you'll go through to your submission. But if we just cancel out of this page and then go back to the challenges page, you can actually see some winners. So if we come down here, you will see a load of different challenges and then also some ended challenges. So you can click on these and see the actual winner. So the winner submitted this and they won the prize. And there are some prizes you can actually win. Most of them have to do with a free PixArt Gold membership for a certain time. You can also go and look at this user and follow them. So if you actually click right here on the name, you can see they have about 3000 followers and they're following about 556 people. You can see all of their posts. You can follow them right here if you just click this button and then you can click on all of their edits and designs and go into a page which is a little bit like an Instagram type of page. You can see the options here. So you can like, save or just write a comment. And also you can see the sources that they made to use it. So within PixArt, there are some templates and some effects 
these will be listed under sources. So this is one of the effects that they used in this image. And you can actually click on that and then go through and use it yourself in other images. A really great option in PixArt though, is the ability to remix. So basically you take their actual image and then you can go and edit it yourself. I'll show you how to do remixes when we get into editing photos. You can allow other people to remix yours, of course, but let's just click on remix and I'll show you how it basically imports their image. And then you've got all the editing tools at the bottom. So you can go and change it a little bit and remix other people's photos. Let's come out of this tab though, and then go back to the challenges page. And now we'll just click on the discover tab, which is this icon right here. And in the discover tab, you can search for hashtags, and you can search for a lot of different interests. So you can come right up to the top and search for pretty much anything. So I've got pop-up background, any hashtag with that you can go and see, you can go and follow the hashtag. And of course you can go in and click it and then just see a lot of the user submissions for that hashtag. You can go and search whatever you want. There pretty much is every single interest in Pixar that you can discover, or you can just scroll down and see if any are looking good that you might wanna follow. You can also search users as well by this icon right up here to the top right. You can then search maybe by username or you can find contacts, friends for yourself, or just flick through some popular users and see their graphic designs and what they've done. And of course you can follow them just by clicking the button. Let's press done though and upload an image to PixArt and see how we can edit this. So it's this big plus button in the middle. So you'll press that. You actually get a load of options. Photos, of course, is just a way for you to upload any photos that you have on your device. Videos is exactly the same. Replays is essentially someone else's edit that you can go through and change and edit yourself. Collages will allow you to upload different images and put them together in a template, like a collage, which is really great. You have other templates here as well, which are mostly graphic designs, Christmas cards, posters, that's thing. Obviously it's Christmas right now, so you're gonna have a lot of those, but as you can see, there are a lot of templates to choose from. If you pick see all, you can actually sort them by what type of social network you might want to post to and also the aspect ratio or the size. So you can see different sizes, landscape and portrait. Flick through loads here and you can also search maybe Christmas backgrounds should be lots of those. So you can go and see what might be good for you. Anything with a crown on is part of PixArt Gold though. So you're going to have to pay extra. You can also capture images with your camera straight in the PixArt app. I would definitely not recommend to do this. It's really low quality. Take images first with the camera app on your phone and then come and edit them in PixArt. Drawings is a whole new thing as well. This is actually a completely separate app that you need to download. So we're not gonna go through that today. Backgrounds, you can just choose from virtually endless amount and free photos are pretty much the same thing that you can go and edit. They are free in PixArt and there are some paid as well. This tutorial though is gonna focus on editing photos. If you want a video editing tutorial, check out more videos in the description. I'll link them there so you can go through and see that. But we're gonna upload a photo like this, press on this one, you can see you're right in the editor. You can change your photo right now with all the editing tools. All of the tools that you'll need are down here at the bottom. You can scroll to the left and right to see all of them. And I'm gonna go through the most used features in the app that you might wanna edit with. Firstly is cropping. So if we come to tools, there are a lot of tools in here. So you're gonna be using this one the most. There are a few different ways to crop. So if you just press crop right here, if you're editing for Instagram or something, you can scroll along at the bottom. You can see that story right here is an Instagram story. So that will change it into the perfect aspect ratio for an Instagram story. You can scroll along more for a Twitter post, for example, or a Pinterest post. So you can change that to the social networks that you want to actually do it on. You can see free as well. This is actually basically just doing it any way that you want. So whatever aspect ratio that you want it might not come out too well. So you can choose the presets if you like, or you can use this slider bar and you can change how exactly the image is rotated in that aspect ratio. I'm actually okay with the original aspect ratio. So you can either come up here and press undo, or you can just press cancel and then it won't make any changes. Another great option though, if we press the tools menu, you can see a lot of different crop options. So free crop or shape crop. If we come to free crop, you can now brush an area that you want to keep. So let's say you wanna cut out me from the background. You can just use a finger and color in red everywhere that you want to crop out and you can very easily just pinch and zoom in to become a little bit more accurate in where you're coloring. 
If I just pinch out though and do an outline like this, then if I just press the next button right here, you'll see that is cut out of the background. Doesn't really look great, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna go back because obviously I don't want to do that, but you can color in and cut out. Or there are some auto features as well. For example, face like this, if you press it, then it is gonna recognize faces and try and cut them out for you. You can scroll through these hair, for example. So it's definitely got my hair or background. Everything that you want kept, you can color in in red. So if I just go, you can see it's cut me out. Not perfect, and you can go through manually and change this if you want. It is a good feature though to cut out either backgrounds or people from backgrounds. You can also use the lasso, which is quite accurate. So you can go and actually, essentially just draw a pencil line around like this. And then that will obviously close up and that's red. So that will be kept and everything else will be cut out. I'm gonna cancel away from this though, because I want to discard these. So just press discard and then we'll go back to the normal image. Other tools though that you can use to change things is the stretch tool and this will essentially stretch the image. So you can see brush to warp. It's gonna be kind of weird and very strange on a selfie, but you can just warp things in. I actually use the warp tool a lot if I'm creating thumbnails and things like that where I actually need to change aspects of the thumbnail and make them a little bit bigger. So it is actually a really good tool. It looks super strange on my face though. So I'm just gonna cancel out of that and discard. It's a really useful tool though. Perspective is also a good tool. If you've just taken an image at the wrong angle, you can come to perspective like this and then use either the lateral or horizontal slider bars and you can change how it was. So this image is obviously off to the side a little bit and I can make it a little bit squarer on like this. Very easy to do and you can do it for this way as well. And it's just gonna be very easily changing the perspective for you if you want to. There are many tools like this though that you can change perspective and also cut parts out of the image. Next, we move on to adjustment tools though, and these are really great. There are two right here. You can see enhance and adjust. Enhance is gonna be more of an auto feature, and I don't think it works too great, not on this image anyway. The app itself is gonna try and enhance the image for you, whatever that means, and you can see that on this image, it just cannot get it right. It's really, really not good. You can either enhance it or increase the saturation. So for me, anyway, on this image, the auto feature definitely can't be used. But if you go to enhance for your image, it may work. Something you can do is actually come to the erase feature right here and specifically erase part of the changes that the app makes. So if I just rub over my face, you can see that the changes are actually rubbed out. You could definitely get some cool looks here depending on what you're actually editing. If you're editing a graphic design, this actually may be a really powerful feature. You can also erase via shape or restore like this and actually color back in the changes. It's not gonna work for me, so I'm just gonna press X here and discard those changes and then come out and press cancel and go back to the original image. The way that you can change everything manually though, come to touch and then come to this adjust button. If we press this, we can manually change everything. We can go from contrast, clarity, saturation. So maybe if I press saturation and I wanna turn the saturation up a little bit, just use a slider bar, move it to the right, saturation will be increased, to the left, saturation decreased. So I think a little bit of saturation added will be a good thing. Also contrast right here, I wanna add some contrast so I slide it to the right or the left to take it away. Definitely adding some contrast, probably a good thing for me. Shadows and highlights is also a way to increase or decrease the contrast. So you can actually change the shadows, that's all the dark parts of the image, separately from the highlights or the lighter parts of the image. Again, left to make them darker and right to make them brighter. I actually think darker is okay here for the shadows and the highlights, brighter, probably not good. Darker a little bit is looking okay. Color temperature is also really important. This will make your image either warmer if you slide it to the right or cooler if you slide it to the left. You can have a look what looks best. I think cooler a little bit probably looks better for this image. I like these changes, so I'm gonna press apply on this one. And then we're back to the editing page. If you wanna be a bit more funky with your edits though, you can actually come to the retouch feature. You can change hair color, eye color, even skin color. It's gonna automatically recognize parts of the image. So we're gonna come all the way over to hair color like this. 
And then as you can see, it's definitely recognized my hair and you can change it with the slider bars, even more intense or less intense like this and then saturation. So you can play around with the colors and go through them. I think probably red is good for me. So I'm just gonna turn up the saturation and then turn up the amount probably to here. That actually looks like I've just dyed my hair. So I'm just gonna press apply on that one. It's exactly the same format for all of the other changes. So you can change eye color. You can even change your skin tone right here to pretty much anything you want, even like a bright purple or something like that. I'm just gonna cancel out of there though, and then blemish fixes and smoothing as well. It's all just using the slider bar. So if you press the option, you can decrease the effect by sliding to the left and increase the effect by sliding to the right. You can also add stickers, text, and callouts to your image. So I'm gonna cancel out of this editing screen, just discard those ones, and then come to stickers and text. And if I scroll all the way to the right-hand side, there's callouts as well. Actually, a callout is essentially like a speech bubble, and then inside the speech bubble, you can press here and just type something. I'm happy with that. You can press the tick button. It's gonna be on there. You can press this icon right here to resize the call out wherever you want. And then you can press on the call out itself to move it around. You can press the button on the top right to move it like this, press it and hold and then drag it around to wherever you want. All of the options are down at the bottom. So you can change the color, you can change the font style as well, and the opacity, which is how see-through it is. So down to zero or up to 100. This is essentially like adding text, but it's obviously in a bubble. So if I just cancel out of this one, we can go back to text. So we'll scroll to the left-hand side. And if we press text, it's essentially the same thing, but there's no bubble. So you can just have this as you want press tick and then exactly the same features here. So drag to resize, one finger, move it wherever you want. It's pretty much the same for stickers as well. These are just different things. Stickers will be exactly the same thing, but just a load of different designs and images that you can actually put onto your own image. So if we just click this one, you can see it's downloading and then it's right there. Exactly the same buttons and options to resize and put it wherever you want. Just change this like this, put it up in the corner. That's fine, so just press apply and then that's there for you. If you wanna undo any edits, it's the undo button right here. You can see and you can actually redo it as well. Very similar to adding stickers and text is the ability to use brushes as well. This is essentially like writing on the image, but you can see all of the different types of brush that you can use. So actually you can use this one. It's essentially like a pencil full of this effect. So you can definitely use this as you wish. I think it looks pretty cool depending on the image. Of course, you can undo it right here. Use a different one. Maybe this one It's going to download and you can do that just how you want. You can make some quite cool looking graphic designs with this. There are some other features as well. Just gonna discard this one down here, but essentially it's all the same. So you can just press on the effect that you want to add and then play around with the settings with the slider bar. Once you're finished with your edit, you have two options. You can either save the edit to your device by pressing this option. That edit is now saved to my camera roll. So I haven't posted it anywhere, but it is privately saved for me. If you want to post this like a social media post on PixArt though, you can click the next button. Now there's these options called replays. Like I said earlier, replays allow other people to actually take your edit and then make their own edits themselves they can actually see all of the edits that you put on the image. So if you've made a graphic design, they can actually see all of the different effects and other things that you've put onto the photo and they can try and copy it and change it and make it their own. You can actually see it playing along what my edits were. So people can copy these and actually learn from this as well. You don't have to have this though. You can add hashtags and descriptions right here. So I could just put hashtag selfie and yeah, it's right there. So I could press that. So if you're happy and want to post, you can definitely do this by pressing post down here, or you can save it onto your phone, and then that will be shared onto your timeline for you. Check out the links in the description for more helpful videos with photo and video editing. That's it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you in the next one.